Hey guys, we're going to be painting a simple shiner dirt bait today. We're going to start off with a white base coat. For a white base coat, I just use the Wicked Colors Wicked Opaque White. White. Layer it on there real good. Sometimes it takes two coats. The thing I like about the Wicked is uh, it seems to only require one coat. Give it one more look over, make sure we got everything that we need to. Bumped the lure a little bit when I was painting right there, but it should be all right. It's not going to be a work of art. I want to clean out the brush between all the colors. What I typically find works best is to just shoot some water in there, dump it out. Once it starts getting a little bit diluted, I'll go in there with the uh, airbrush cleaner. Once it gets about that color, I'll just start spraying it through the brush into the, uh, the thing here. Blow it dry. We'll look in the cup and just kind of clean it out real good. Take an old rag and just jam it in there. I'll give it one last rinse. Want to make sure the nozzle is clean. Make sure the uh, needle is back. And then just kind of gently cram that in there. Just looking to make sure that it's nice and dry. That way we won't, won't get any splatter on our next color. So our next color is going to be a uh, Cretex fluorescent yellow. Just going to kind of gently, lightly do it on the jerk bait all over. Before spraying any on the uh, the lure, definitely want to give it a test blow. It's good. And that's real gentle. Really not going very far back on the brush.
little heavy on the top. I think that's pretty good. Actually, I'd like to be on this to give it a kind of a nice horn to belly. What we're going to use for that is a transparent Sunrise Yellow, again by Cretex. Not going to use much, so just one or two drops should be all that we need. Gonna give it a nice test balloon, make sure we're getting orange. Okay, maybe we need a little bit more than two or three drops. Get the belly, a little bit of the sides, just a little bit of overspray. Yeah, it looks like the left side got a little bit more, so we're going to need one more drop to equal that out. That's our orange. We're getting straight back to the heat set. Pro tip when you're uh, airbrushing, don't set your elbow into the epoxy that you dripped five minutes ago when you're finishing up your last bait. So the next color we're going to be doing is again another transparent. This is, oh actually, oh, that's not the one I want. It is still transparent though, but it's violet. This we're going to be putting on the top of it and on the nose. What I'm going for here is to get a little bit of overspray on the sides. It can be a little tricky. It's gonna be really light, light on the trigger.
little bit more. I like it. I think it still needs just a little bit more on the sides here. I think that's pretty good for our violet. One thing I like to do is get the tail kind of the same matching color. Alright, put another heat set on this. Back to the tedious cleaning of the brush. As we get into these darker colors, it uh, takes a few more rinses to get the airbrush clean. So the next decision is always a difficult one. The choice of doing the pinstripe on the back. Do you want to go straight black with the opaque black? Or what a lot of people like is doing the detail sepia in the wicked color. And these are both Cretex. The black is nice because it just sprays straight on there, but the downside is if you mess up, you can really mess up the whole bait real easily. The problem with the sepia is that it takes two or three coats to get it dark enough to where I like it. We're going to go ahead and do black. Feeling black. I think we're going to put a shad spot on this. Normally when I'm doing a shad spot, I prefer black. It just stands out a lot more than sepia. And all these colors, I don't reduce any of these colors at all. I just stream, spray them straight. So like I was saying to the black, it's really important that you get your sprays spot on or else you're going to mess up the whole thing. All I want is just right down the back. I'm doing this, I'm doing it very light on the trigger. I'm going to 
I'll leave the nose purple, I'd say. Our last stop is the shad spot. So what I use for shad spots is just an old chunk of cardboard that I poked a hole through. On these jerk baits, what I'll normally try to do is kind of get it right in the middle of the hump. To make sure the shad spots are kind of even on both sides, you want a point of reference. So kind of what I'm doing is I'm lining up that crease with the top of the eye and that side with the back of the eyeball. Then this hold it steady. And the nice thing again with black is just one quick squirt and you got your shad spot. Just want to flip this guy around. pays to remember what your references actually were. So again, if you forget, just kind of line it up and you can kind of easily see. So that crease was again on the top of the eye and on that side was that. So It's a little bit lower than I wanted it, but not bad. Whenever you're using black, you definitely need to make sure that you clean your brush right away, or else it's going to be a nightmare trying to clean this thing later. The other downside to using black over sepia is cleaning it takes twice as long. My general rule of thumb whenever I use black is to always make sure it's the last color I use. Seems no matter how many times you clean it, black is always just going to be there. At the end of every spray session or if I use black and I forgot that I have to use another color or if I decide I want to do a few more baits later on, always clean it out with uh, airbrush cleaner. I normally just kind of blow that through. The other thing that I've seen a few people do is clog the nozzle, kind of do a, a weird bubble thing. I don't really know if it does anything, but it seems to help. It's a nice placebo effect for me, at the very least. And then my last step, I'll normally squirt just a little bit more water in there. Make sure that it sprays nice and clean. No colors. And I would consider that brush clean. Next step we're going to be doing is choosing eyeballs. This jerkbait uses quarter inch eyes, if I remember right. I normally like using the shad color eyes. When I first started getting into to, uh, paint my own lures, eyeballs were one of the trickiest things to me. Just getting them to set into that uh, socket correctly is always a little bit tricky for me. What I've come to use is just wooden toothpicks. So the first thing I'll do is dab a little bit super glue. I've tried a few different super glues, but this uh, gel control by Loctite is uh, the best because any of the liquid ones 
they just kind of run all over the place and generally get on the rest of the bait and just mess it up. So my trick with the toothpick is to just kind of get it underneath there, just kind of jam it into the socket and then just push it down. Uh, it doesn't look like a quarter inch is an exact fit for this, but it'll work. I kind of prefer big eyes on all my baits. I think uh, eyeballs are a really big fish attractor. Especially really big ones that they can see and stand out on the rest of the bait. is the eyeballs. I will then uh, typically heat set the, uh, the eyeballs to help speed up that uh, crazy glue to dry. Normally use my, the hair dryer on low though. Uh, next up is going to be to remove the tape that's on the bill to get us ready to uh, clear coat this. And I really wrapped the tape on this one. If anyone's wondering why I'm wearing gloves, uh, the type of clear coat that I use is Devcon 2-ton 30-minute epoxy. What I've come to uh, discover is that our hands have some type of oil and other nasty stuff that are on them. So when I'm handling the bait like this, the, uh, the epoxy just doesn't really level and do its job all that well. Or so I've read online. Uh, ever since I started wearing gloves though, I've been uh, pretty happy with all my clear coats. Or at least, I should say, happier. I want to definitely make sure those eyeballs are still in there. Okay, Let's set it back in there. So again, the clear coat I use is uh, Devcon, Devcon Home Epoxy Resin, 2-ton, uh, crystal clear, 30-minute. Uh, 30 minute is definitely an important thing. Uh, I have not tried 5 minute, but I've heard 5 minute is horrible. It yellows. Um, and from my experience in this 30 minute stuff, in about 5 minutes, it's not even usable. Uh, it really hardens and thickens up real fast, so uh, definitely you want to go with 30 minute. You're supposed to be really precise with this. I am not really very precise with this, but I feel that uh, the way I do this measuring works out pretty well. What I'll normally do is hold both the bottles, wait for it to fill up in the cap like that. The, uh, the blue stuff takes the longest to kind of get in here. But then, once they're kind of both ready, I'll just apply equal pressure. And then just make sure both streams are kind of coming out at the same pace. This is a smaller bait, so we're not going to really need that much. And then we'll cap them off again. Oops. And then you definitely want to make sure you mix these nice. I'm mixing these in just a little condiment cup. Um, I've seen a lot of people use a lot of different things. Uh, I used to use, and I'll still use sometimes, the, uh, the like uh, plastic shot measurement cups. Uh, those work well, but I just felt like they're a waste because they're one and done, and they're it's not that they're really expensive, but I just don't really like using plastic. These condiment cups are a lot cheaper, and they're 
They're paper. I don't feel as bad throwing them away. Um, I used to stir these with a uh, paintbrush I'm going to use. Um, but again, some feedback that I've heard through the years is uh, if you use a paintbrush to mix this stuff, uh, it introduces a lot more air bubbles and can affect the end result. So you don't want to do that. So I've started using popsicle sticks and noticed things to be a little bit better. then I'm just using really super cheap disposable uh, paint brushes here. So just paint this on. brushing the stuff on it kind of looks like it's yellow but as you paint it it really clears up I will paint over all the eyelets you'll see what I'll do with those uh, once I'm done here baits that have really small bills really make it difficult doing the nose. Some people will epoxy the uh, the bills. I normally don't. I think I've never actually tried it and I just feel that it might mess up the action. Okay, I think that's pretty good. I do heat set this uh, with the hair dryer on low. While I'm doing so, I just kind of look over it to see if there's any areas I might have missed or any areas that are uneven. Everything looks good though. So the last thing I do, the toothpick that I use for the eyeballs, I just jam through the, uh, the eyelets to kind of clear them up. And then this bad boy is ready to go on the rack. So this is the drying rack that I use, it's just an old... Uh, microwave motor really that I have hardwired going down to a timer that I set, I set the, uh, the timer for about 10 hours. Normally I'll be uh, doing my painting at night, let this run overnight, and then in the morning we'll uh, take a look at see how it turned out, put the hooks on it, give it a go. So here's what the finished product looks like after the clear coat has uh, finished drying. Turned out pretty good. A little bit of issues with the clear coat. Looks like we got a little nub right there. But everything else looks good. None of the eyes uh, sealed closed. So uh, the last step is to uh, just put some hooks and a split ring on this. So for this jerk bait, I use uh, six millimeter split rings. I've got my handy dandy uh, split ring pliers. I normally put the nose on first. And what I normally do with split rings is I feed it on with the split ring and then just use normal pliers to just, well, sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Feed it onto the nose, just like that. And then 
take your pliers and just feed it around real quick, just like that. So for this size jerk bait, I'm using size four hooks. Normally what I'll do is I'll use the split ring pliers, feed it onto the hook first, and then take my normal pliers, make it so that there's just a little bit of that hook ring or ring exposed, and then just line it up, kind of straddle that loop, and then just feed it through. Real quick and easy. So on the front hook, I'm using via, uh, VMC Gladiator hooks, and on the back, uh, I normally like using dressed hooks. This is, a, again, a size 4. I think this is an Arky, Arky brand, dressed, dressed feather. They're really affordable when you buy them on lure parts online. So normally just buy a bunch of these. It's like a multi-pack, comes with size two, four, and six, which are the ones that I, really the only size hooks that I'll use unless I'm making my musky baits. There you have it. That's the finished product.